Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks to the efforts of the United Nations, particularly through the Education for All programs, so many girls have never before been enrolled in school than during the last decade. Currently, while the international community renews its commitment to the 2030 education program, more and more girls will be enrolling in schools over the next years. However, enrolling is not enough. They must stay in school. But one of the greatest challenges facing schoolgirls and female students is school-based violence. There's evidence that the education of women and girls has a positive impact on economic, social, cultural, and public health development, particularly in developing countries. When women are educated, they become empowered to participate in family decision-making and community life. They're better prepared to protect their own health and that of their loved ones. However, every year, an estimated 246 million children suffer school-related violence, and girls are the first victims of these abusive situations. Plan International defines school-related gender-based violence as any act of sexual, physical, or psychological violence inflicted on children in and around schools due to stereotypes and roles or norms assigned to them or expected of them because of their sex or gender identity. This type of violence affects hundreds of millions of children, it's a phenomenon that affects all countries of the world, regardless of their social, cultural, or economic differences. Girls' education problems usually happen in third world countries, like the home country of Dina. She's an African girl who was from a few lucky people who could get a good education in that country, especially that she was a girl. When she was in high, Dina was sexually abused by her teacher. She went home to tell her mother about what happened to her, but she was surprised when she found out that her family didn't believe her. Dina's family told her that day she couldn't go to school anymore. She'll stay home like other girls waiting for the right guy to marry them. And for her own good that no one knows about it. Dina was the victim and she was the one to blame and the one to be punished. Dina didn't like the situation that she found herself in, especially that she knew she didn't do anything wrong. Dina was thinking about a solution of her problems. All what she cared about at the time was to get back to school again. So she talked with her parents again in order to finish her high school. She convinced them that if they let her finish her school, she'll marry her cousin as they want. After she agreed with her parents, Dina moved to another school in order to finish her high school. But Dina didn't keep her promise to her parents. Soon after she finished her high school, she applied for an American education program, which includes a full scholarship in the University of Buffalo in New York, without telling her parents. A few weeks later, Dina knew she was accepted on the program that she applied for. She told her parents that she needs to travel to the capital city in order to buy some clothes for her nearly wedding. Dina's parents didn't know that their daughter was in the city because she had an interview in the U.S. Embassy in order to get her visa. A few months later, Dina was informed that her passport's ready now. She can travel to the USA whenever she wants. She needs to go to the capital city again because she wanted to collect her passport and book a flight ticket. Dina also needed the money to book the ticket. Dina thought she could convince her parents that she needs to travel to the city again because she needed to buy a few more things, but this time she wanted a larger amount of money. As soon as she arrived in the city, Dina went to the American embassy to collect her passport. Then she went to a travel agency to book a ticket to John F. Kennedy International Airport. She was lucky because she could find a cheap ticket on the same evening. From the airport, Dina sent a message to her parents to inform them that she will leave the country in order to continue to study in American University. She told them that having a college degree was her dream since she was a little girl, and they wouldn't let her do that because they had other plans for her. The first days in America weren't easy for Dina. She didn't know anyone there. Besides that she couldn't speak with anyone back home, she was lonely and sad, so she decided to read and study to fill her free time. That all changed when she met Sam, who was her classmate. Both of them were studying in the law school. Sam wasn't from New York, and he didn't know anyone there either, so he became Dina's best friend. Dina and Sam were studying together, reading together, going out every weekend for the movies together, but nothing emotional was going between them, or what they thought was the beginning. After she finished her first year in college, Dina was getting used to staying in New York. 
and also her relationship with Sam finally has been taken to the next step. Sam told Dina that he liked her and he wanted to be with her more than his best friend. Dina was so happy for what she had been told by Sam. She couldn't believe that she can be with someone who she loves, note the right guy, and her parents choosing according to his financial state. And what made her even happier that he asked her to meet his parents? In the summer, Sam took Dina to meet his parents for the first time in his little hometown. Sam's parents liked the smart and beautiful girl, and they thought their son's lucky to be with a girl like that. They loved that Dina was helping Sam studying and improving his skills. They also liked that Dina relied on herself in order to get to America and continue her education trip. However, none of her family supported her. After they visited Sam's parents, Dina and Sam traveled together to enjoy the rest of the summer. They had a great time together, and they agreed on two things on that trip. The first thing was that they would support each other until they successfully graduated from law school. And the second was that they will marry after they graduate from law school, and they'll have a lot of kids together. Dina wasn't sure that she and Sam would follow their agreement on that summer or not. She didn't know if they'd be together for the next following years. After all, she knew that she was so good in keeping her promises. But in graduation day, Sam proposed to Dina in front of all the students. And just a couple of months later, they got married. After they got married, Dina and Sam moved to live together in a nice house in New York City. Sam was working as a lawyer in the prosecutor's office, and Dina was working in an organization specialized in defending little girls who get abused in home or school. Dina loved her job because she thought it was very important that little girls can have the support that she didn't have when she was a little girl. Specifically, that she knew that evidence showed that children's early experiences impact them throughout life. Dina also knew that child abuse comes in several different forms and includes physical, emotional, sexual, and psychological abuse. The signs of child abuse include unexplained bruises, overly aggressive behavior, lack of necessities, and drastic changes in behavior and eating habits. Unfortunately, child abuse remains common throughout the world, including in the United States. In 2019, there were 656,243 reported cases of child abuse, and the most common form of maltreatment in the U.S. was neglect. After a couple of years of happy marriage, Dina and Sam remembered their agreement in the first summer of law school. They said back then that they'd have a lot of kids. Sam told Dina that they should start going to the doctor in order to have a baby. A year after this conversation, Dina delivered her first baby. She was a beautiful little girl who looked exactly like her mother. They named her after her grandmother, Sam's mother. Dina and Sam loved her little daughter. They took really good care of her. They provided her with all her needs, and they gave her the best education possible. Until one day, Dina came back from work shocked. She told Sam that a lady came to the organization office in order to report a sexual abuse of her little daughter by a school teacher. The surprise was that the school that she was talking about is the same school as Sarah, their daughter. Sam's reaction wasn't like Dina's expected. He said, that doesn't mean that this woman's telling the truth. And even if she is right, that doesn't mean that all the teachers in that school are the same. If someone committed a crime, he will be punished by the law. Dina said, this is our daughter we're talking about. Sam said, you need to investigate more in that before we take any actions. A couple of days after this conversation, Dina got back home early in order to show Sam the evidence that she had. She had a photo for the teacher who abused the little girl, who was their neighbor, Mr. Smith. He was also Sarah's teacher in the last year. Returning home after work, he saw a strange picture. How he acted surprised, his wife, Sam, run to Mrs. Smith's house and started kicking him up. But Dina followed him and stopped him, saying, We're lawyers. We know how to punish him by law. There's no need for you to do that. Sam listened to his wife. They reported everything to police, and Mr. Smith got arrested. Since that day, Sam left his job at the prosecutor's office and joined Dina in her organization. Dina and Sam are living a happy life with their little girl. Every day they're helping a lot of children who have been abused at home and in schools. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.